I know I wrote a book, right? It's called Buy a Game and it's free. Click the link down there, you got it. What's going on everybody? This is Dre Baldwin with DreAllDay.com. This video here is what you need to play professional basketball. That could be NBA, D-League, overseas, anywhere that you want to play where they have a professional team structure, meaning there's there are coaches, you have practices on a regular basis, you got games, and this is what you do. What you do is play on this team. And maybe there are situations sometimes people have another job or something like that on the side and there are leagues where maybe you need to do that and there are living situations i don't know your situation but you do where maybe you do need to do that but i'm talking about a professional team where you're on the team there are practices coaches you run plays and all of that and you get paid you want to play pro basketball all you need to do is follow the four things i'm gonna tell you in this video if you don't want to play pro basketball all you got to do is violate any one of the four things I'm going to give you in this video and you won't play pro basketball. These are the four things you need to do. Number one, you want to play professional basketball. Number one thing you must do and must continue to do is you got to have some damn game. You got to work on your game. You must have skill. You must have professional level skill. Now, what does professional level skill mean? That means you need to be, if you could get dropped into a gym with a bunch of professional players in that gym and you play ball with them or practice with them or work out with them, whatever you're doing, you should not look out of place. If you look out of place, that means you need to skill up. You need to work on your game. You gotta have pro level game, meaning whatever position you consider yourself playing or whatever type of game you wanna have, you need to be able to actually, you need to be able to go, like go for real. Go with capital letter G-O. And if you don't know what that means, then you need to go find some pro level players and start playing with them until you understand what it means. Because even if you're not at their level, when you play with them, you will understand that you're not at their level. You will understand that you got a long way to go. You'll understand there are some steps you need to take, some things you need to add to your skill set. If you need help working on your game, go to hoophandbook.com. There's a link down there in the video description. That's where you can learn how to work on your game and actually do the work on your game to get your game to where it needs to be. So number one thing you got to do, you want to play pro basketball, you got to have some skills. Because if you ain't got no game, I don't care how many people you know, I don't care if you got 35 agents, I don't care if you, if your LeBron James is your brother, it doesn't matter. If you ain't got no game, you're not going to last playing pro basketball. You won't last too long. You won't last past the first step. So number one thing is have game. Everybody got that. Great. Number two thing you must do. You must market and promote yourself. Market and promote yourself. That means you must generate exposure for yourself. You need to get other people to know that you can play, know that you have game, and want to be they want to be involved with you somehow, some way. Either that means they want to sign you to their team, they want to tell you about somebody who can sign you to their team, or they want to represent you to help you get signed to a team. That's in the form of an agent, a manager, a coach, a scout, whoever. You must market and promote yourself, meaning it is your job to make sure other people know who you are, know your name, know how you play, know that you can play, and they have a way of sharing what you can do with other people. Or there's a way that you're sharing what you can do with those people directly. So either you're going directly to the people who can help you get a deal. So when I say market and promote yourself, that means you need to somehow, some way, whether you do it directly or indirectly, meaning going through other people, you have to get the people who can sign you to a contract, people who can put you on a team and pay you money to play basketball. You must get those people to know that you have step one, that you have game. Step one is you have game, right? So as long as you have game, your job is to get other people who have the power to give you a job to know that you have game. That's all the marketing is. Everybody catch what I just said there. That's all the marketing is. You have a product or service that is worth X number of dollars. You need to get people who have those dollars to know that it is worth it and want it. That's all it is. If you can do that, you've completed step two, which is marketing and promoting yourself. And this is not a one-time thing, unless you're gonna sign with a team and then you just play for that team for the rest of your career. Maybe that'll happen to you, but hey, you might end up not on that team anymore. Now you gotta get on a different team and a different team and a different team. And yes, your performance can help market and promote you, but you can help it out too. With your word of mouth, by email, through an agent, by just talking to other people. And that's what I'm gonna talk about in step number three. So step one is have game. Step two, market and promote yourself. Step three, you gotta network. You gotta communicate. You must have allies. You need to have people who know you and people who you know who you can call on for favors, people who will help you out, people who will introduce you to other people, people who know people who you don't know. You need to make yourself know people who you need to know. You gotta build relationships. You gotta work on your communication skills. 
This is not only through spoken word, this could also be through email. It could be through the materials that you put out there, your social media, whether that's your tweets or Instagram posts that you posted for fun, whether it's emails that you send out to other people trying to get your name out there, or maybe a response that you're giving to someone who inquired about you. You gotta get your communication skills up. You gotta build connections with people who can help you and people who know people who know people who know people who can help you. And you never know who that person is. You gotta work on your ability to build those relationships. And let me give you a secret key with that because I'm sure you've heard that before, build relationships. People talk about that in every industry, every business, every field. What ex how exactly can you build a relationship? This is how you do it. If you can learn this skill, you can build relationships for the rest of your life. This is what you need to do. You must offer other people something that they want in exchange to get what you want. I'm gonna repeat that and now I'm explaining it because it sounds so simple. I'm sure you've heard it before, but you probably, there's a 90% chance you who's watching this, you don't, you're not putting this into action often enough. You must give people what they want in order to ask them or expect from them that you're gonna get what you want. I get emails every single day from people, emails, uh, Snapchat messages, snaps, DMs from people who want me to give them something that they want. Hey, can you help me get on overseas? Can you introduce me to an agent? Can you show me the steps that I need to take if I wanna get into a exposure camp? Can you tell me which camp should I go to? People want me to do things for them. I get messages all the time from people wanting me to do things for them. And you watching this, you need to check yourself and ask yourself if you've been the type of person, not necessarily talking to me, but you're the type of person, you go to people and you ask them to do things for you, but you're not offering them anything in exchange. I want you to understand something about human psychology. Human beings, we work on the reciprocity principle, which is ingrained in us, it's hardwired into our DNA, the reciprocity principle. For those who don't know what it means, very simple. We reciprocate, meaning if you do something for me, I'm going to feel indebted to you. I'm gonna feel like I have to do something for you. It's ingrained in me, it's like, it's unconscious. I'm gonna be unconsciously thinking, I gotta do something for Mike because Mike did something for me. I gotta do something for Sally because Sally did something for me. And Vice versa works the same way. If I do something for you, you're gonna feel like you need to do something for me just because I did something for you. Not because I, I'm not, not because I told you you had to, not because somebody came and said, hey, you better do something for him because he did something for you. It's ingrained in us as human beings, meaning we help people who help us. If you help another person, even if they didn't ask for it, I guarantee they're gonna feel like they need to help you because it's ingrained in us as human beings. Meaning, when you go to other people, and this is the other thing I wanna tell you, actually, before I even say that, there is a limit people there's a limit to how much any human being is willing to be charitable to another person who from whom they're receiving nothing back there's a limit to how much we're willing to give that yes I understand all about paying it forward somebody helped me out 10 years ago so I'm gonna help a whole bunch of people out nowadays yes I understand that and human beings work off of that too some more than others but you need to understand there's only so much another person is going to want to do for you if they're not getting anything in exchange for it and understand getting something in exchange for those who maybe you may be clamming up or feeling kind of negative about this point right now is that giving something in exchange does not necessarily mean money. It can mean your time, it can mean your attention, it can mean you have certain skills that another person could use. It can mean just the goodwill, the goodness of their heart that they get some recognition for having done something good for another person. Understand this, that every human being is different. Some people are driven by the money. Some people want your time. Some people just want the attention and recognition. Some people just want to feel good. You gotta, you first of all need to know who you're talking to when you're dealing with other people. And if you don't know, then you need to find out who you're talking to. And when you find out what that person's price is, because every human being has a price. And when I say every human being has a price, what I mean is every human being has motivations, things that motivate them to take action and things that will not motivate them to take action. And it's different in every person. So just because money worked on this guy doesn't mean money's gonna work on that guy. Just because goodwill was what this person did it for, the other person might not do it for goodwill. They might want the money. So you gotta understand to build a network, to build relationships with people, you must have something within you or something that you have, something you can offer that is worth something so that when you bring it to other people and present it to other people, they want it and they're willing to do something for you in exchange to get what you got. If you have nothing valuable to offer anybody, why would you expect anyone to do anything for you? 
and you can have something valuable could be your ability to communicate your ability to make friends if you can make other people laugh if you can make other people feel certain emotions if you can make people if you can entertain people those things are worth things those are valuable you watch youtube videos because somebody has some information or some knowledge or they're funny or is dramatic or it makes you feel a certain way or it makes you want to share it with one of your boys via email those are that's value that's what value is. Value has something that you have that is worth something that makes other people want to do things for you. So I put a lot of into that point because I want to make sure y'all understand what I mean when I say networking and building relationships. You got to offer something to get something. Okay. And if you're not offering nothing, don't expect anything back. If you happen to get something, you got lucky. Your luck may run out at the wrong time though. So keep that in mind. So point number one, have game. Point number two, market and promote yourself so people know who the hell you are and what you can do. Point number three, build relationships, network. Somebody will know somebody or know something that you don't know or who you don't know, and that can be the key to your career. Point number four, doing all these things that I just laid out, you must for the rest of your career, from the time you decide to play basketball professionally, even if you haven't done it yet, until the time you decide you don't want to, actually, you do this for the rest of your life, actually, point number four, you must take full responsibility for everything in your career. You must take full responsibility for everything in your career. So if you go to a team and they don't pay you the money, you take responsibility for it. If you have an agent and your agent don't do anything, doesn't get you a contract for three years straight, you take responsibility. If you got a coach who's treating you unfairly and not giving you the playing time you deserve, you know you're the best player on the team, you take responsibility for it. If you email somebody on the internet who got all this stuff on their website about playing overseas, but they don't even write you back when you ask them a question and all they had to do was write you back to help you out, you take responsibility for it. And when I say take responsibility, that doesn't mean you have to necessarily, actually it does mean you blame yourself. Instead of blaming the coach or an agent or some person on the internet who you never met or some situation that didn't work out in your favor, instead of blaming those things or those people, you blame yourself for every single thing that takes place. If you're gonna do any blaming, you're blaming yourself. You don't have to blame at all because we know that blame stands for be lame. Uh, you don't need to be lame. Uh, you can just take responsibility. Taking responsibility is different from blaming because blaming just means it's your fault and we're just gonna leave it at that. Taking responsibility means, okay, this is the situation since it's my responsibility, I'm going to do something about this situation to get it to where I want to get it to. Two different things. So taking full responsibility means you're, you're responsible for your game. All right? And having game and showing game is two different things. There's a lot of players out there who got a lot of game when they're in the gym working out by themselves. They don't have so much game when they're on the court with nine other people. So having game and showing game, you're responsible for that. Marketing and promoting yourself. Nobody knows your name. That's your fault. You went to an exposure camp and, it, and nothing came from that exposure camp. That's not the camp's fault. That's your fault. You take responsibility for it. And this is why you need to take responsibility. The more things you take responsibility for, the more things you can change. Because let's say I, was, I wanted to have a picnic today, but it started raining. Okay. If I don't take any responsibility for that, then there's nothing I can do about the picnic. But if I take responsibility, okay, it's raining. I'm taking responsibility for this. All right, we're going to have a picnic in the house. I took responsibility now I could do something about it but if I took no, no responsibility and it's raining then I'm like okay well I guess the picnic is canceled I mean very simple basic example but you you should understand what I'm saying if you're old enough to play pro basketball you're smart enough intelligent enough to understand what I'm saying even from that raw example you take responsibility for things that means you can do something about them if you don't take responsibility you blame somebody else then that means it's their responsibility to change it but what if they don't change it what if they don't want to change it what if they don't even care that you're blaming them but they don't even know who you are and you're blaming them. What can you do? You can't do anything because you put all the responsibility on that person. Whoever you blame has all the responsibility for the situation. So if you blame mother nature or you blame some agent who you never met or you blame some dude off the internet who don't even know your name or you blame some coach who don't give a damn about you and your career, guess what? You have no opportunity. You have no ability to respond. That's what responsibility is. Ability to respond. So if you don't give yourself responsibility for everything that goes on, you can't do anything about it. Just by definition. Everybody understand what I'm saying? Let me recap these four points. Number one, you got to have game. You got to show your game. So having game, showing game, two different things. Make sure you can show your game. Number two, market and promote yourself. Layman's terms, that means you need people who can do something to help your career to know who the hell you are and know that you're good at it. Number three, build relationships. You must build relationships by offering people something in exchange for what you want. If you have nothing to offer, don't expect to receive anything. And number four, take full responsibility for everything. You take full responsibility for everything that happens in your life, whether we're talking basketball, business, your kids, school, family, money, 
anything. If you take full responsibility for everything that happens in your life, that means you have the ability to do something about it. But if you take no responsibility, you have no ability to respond. Therefore, anything that happens just happens to you. You're just a victim of circumstances for the rest of your life. And you probably wouldn't watch none of my videos because you wouldn't want to hear what I had to say to you. Work on your game. DreAllDay.com.